2013, the original Titan would have been perfect for gamers with bottomless pockets or enthusiasts which needed the extra VRAM. That is because this is essentially a 780 Ti with 6 gigabytes of VRAM as opposed to the 3 gigabytes on the 780 Ti. Even though the Titan had less compute performance and CUDA cores than the 780 Ti, so I'm not too sure what that was about, but either way, both of these graphics cards back then would have been absolute monsters. According to Tech Power Up, the Titan is about the same levels of performance as a GTX 970, but in 2024, I'm not sure how much I believe that because the 970 is Maxwell, which has aged pretty well, all things considered, but the original Titan is Kepler. And as we all know, Kepler is, well, it hasn't aged particularly well, has it? So the Titan's missing about three years of game ready driver updates. And if you want to play a game with DirectX 12 features like Assassin's Creed Valhalla or even DirectX 11.1 features like God of War, you're kind of out of luck because these games won't even start. Nevertheless, I want to see how this Titan gets on in 2024. So I've put it into my GPU test bench, which has an Intel Core i5 12400F, 32 gigabytes of dual rank, dual channel DDR4 memory, an MSI B660-A Pro motherboard, and a one terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD. All testing has been done at 1080p today as, yeah, that is the absolute highest resolution I'd recommend with this graphics card. And it's been left at its stock out of the box settings. So let's see how well or how poorly the original Titan plays games. So the first game up today gives the Titan a bit of a hard time. That is because it's Cyberpunk 2077. And as we know, anything before Turing doesn't really perform that well in it. And that continues today because the Titan got 35 FPS on average with 24 FPS for the 1% low on the low preset with high textures. So the game looks somewhat good because you've got the 6 gigabytes of VRAM to play around with. But 35 FPS on average isn't particularly the best. If you were cool with sort of a console like experience and I mean an Xbox One or a PS4, maybe you might be set but there are better graphics cards you could get for around this price. If you want to get into some esports gaming, don't worry because games like Fortnite will perform fine on the Titan. That is because 214 FPS on average with a 1% low of 128 FPS means you're getting decent performance. Yes, the 1% low isn't particularly brilliant, but when is it ever great in Fortnite? So the Titan performs pretty all right in Fortnite Battle Royale. Doom Eternal is up next and this is arguably the most disappointing game today, that is because it was virtually unplayable. The average of 42 FPS doesn't seem too bad at first glance but that 1% low of 27 FPS was certainly noticeable in gameplay. That is because performance was just all over the place in Doom Eternal for some reason. I'd have to put this down to driver compatibility as there was a warning when I launched the game so that is something you need to look out for. It's not all doom and gloom because a game like Skyrim Special Edition does perform totally fine on this graphics card, but it should do as it's a remaster of a game which launched in 2011. Nevertheless, 60 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 60 frames per second net decent performance from the Titan. To be fair, Skyrim Special Edition is engine locked to 60 frames per second, so you're literally getting perfect performance in this game at 1080p. No complaints here. The original Titan launched in the same year as GTA 5, or the console launch of GTA 5 that is, but performance here is absolutely fine, with 135 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 100 FPS. This means you're going to be gaming just fine at 1080p in GTA 5, and I've got absolutely no complaints with this game. Halo Reach on the Master Chief Collection performed brilliantly. This is because 186 FPS on average with a 1% low of 174 frames per second means very smooth gameplay. To be fair, Halo Reach is 14 years old now almost and on the original preset it's not going to be too intensive but it goes to show you can get some absolutely incredible frame rate in retro games like this. Well, can you consider Halo Reach retro now? 
Another esports game is up next, and that is Rainbow Six Siege. And if you wanted a 144Hz experience, you're set because the Titan is capable of pushing out 190 FPS on average, and the 1% low was also looking pretty decent with 141 FPS there. So if you wanted to play Rainbow Six Siege on a Titan for some reason, just know it's doable. The last game up today is a game I'll rarely test and that's Battlefield 5, however I'm glad I tested it because on the low preset the Titan did somewhat decently and it exceeded my expectations. 94 FPS on average and a 1% low of 82 frames per second is decent performance in my book and that is unusually smooth for Battlefielders. It does like to stutter, especially in Battlefield 5, but the performance today has shown the original Titan can certainly play and play quite well. So then, I think it's fair to say that the original Titan is, well, it's a bit of a mixed bag. That is because depending on the game you want to play, the performance could either be pretty decent or it could be pretty shocking. If we look at some of the good performing games like Skyrim Special Edition and GTA 5, I'm not too surprised that the Titan performs well in these games as it launched in 2013, the same year as GTA 5's launch. And Skyrim Special Edition is a remaster of a game which originally launched in 2011, so I'd be quite concerned if the Titan couldn't run these just fine. Flipping the coin and looking at some of the poor performing games today, and as always on older cards like this, Cyberpunk 2077 isn't going to be a great experience. On the low preset, the original Titan provides a barely playable experience, somewhat similar to the original Xbox One or PS4. So depending on what sort of need you've got, that might be okay for you, but I wouldn't go out and buy this just to play Cyberpunk. As for Doom Eternal, it was absolutely unplayable because of the frame drops. They were absolutely horrendous and it rendered the game utterly unplayable and it wasn't a great experience at all. I think this is down to a driver optimization or lack thereof. So yeah, I think the hardware is totally fine for it for the most part, but the driver optimization just isn't there. And speaking of poor performance, if you want to play any game which is relatively new that requires DirectX 11.1 or 12 at a feature level, you can forget it because it won't even start. So thank you Kepler. So despite it being a Titan, at its heart it is still a Kepler graphics card and like I've said with pretty much every single Kepler graphics card I've taken a look at in the previous years on the channel, I don't really recommend them because they've just simply aged like milk. I also think its pricing is not very good either. On new sites like eBay, you can get it for around 60-ish pounds, and there is a massive elephant in the room with that, and that is the 8 gigabyte RX 580. That is a much better buy at this price point because it has two extra gigabytes of VRAM, and it is still somewhat supported by AMD. And more importantly, it supports DirectX 12.0, at a feature level. Oh, and did I mention it's a lot more efficient than this thing because the Titan consumes like 270 ish watts under a gaming load, which is absolutely insane for the performance level you're getting. And it's all of these reasons why I cannot recommend the OG Titan in 2024, but to be fair, I was never going into this video with a recommendation at the end of it because it's just way too old now. Like, it is a very good GPU to have in a collection, maybe. But in terms as an actual daily driver, gaming on it, nah, I wasn't ever going to recommend this to be fair. But let's not dwell on its performance in 2024 or lack thereof, because the Titan represents a time when PC gaming was a bit better, in my opinion. Like if you look at the GPUs these days, the price corrected 4080 Super goes for a grand now in the UK, and I believe it's a thousand USD as well, where this thing is the Titan, and this was 9.99 when it came out, I believe. GTX Titan. So yes, this launched at $999, which is the same price as what the 4080 Super is going for now. But admittedly, stuff like inflation does come into effect. But nevertheless, this is a Titan card, and the 4080 Super is a 4080 Super. But what I'm trying to get at is PC gaming was a bit more fun back then. So then, to round off the video, don't buy the OG Titan in 2024, it's simply not worth it if you want to game on it, but if you want a cool GPU in your collection, I mean, it looks pretty cool and it is the first ever Titan, so it is a pretty substantial GPU in the history of GPUs, but as for gaming on it every day, 
Nah, get an RX 580 8GB instead. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this video here and there are two other GPU and CPU testing videos right up here which might be right up your alley. And if you got this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you for sticking around this long. It does really help out with the channel. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one and I hope you have a good rest of your day.